Hey, what's going on, Game Leapers? The 10 craziest builds of Patch 1218, which is very soon going to hit the rift. So to know what the best builds are, I might even throw some room pages in here as well to help you out. Make sure you stick around for the whole video. And if you want to master, guys, any of these champions, make sure you check out the Game Leap website in the description and comment section because our players and coaches from around the world are uploading daily videos. These will help you improve 100% guaranteed because they are made by the best to help you become the best. These might include champion courses, champion guides, maybe even some high elo bot analyses where we show you what the best in the world do that you can easily do in your games so check out those links and get that exclusive access to our library of content by signing up and let's get into the countdown now the first build i want to talk about is rengar and we're not talking about rengar in the jungle rengar actually in the top lane and the key to this build is getting an eclipse as early as possible what eclipse does for rengar well not only is the omni vamp the lethality the attack damage that's all really useful but it's really useful because of the armor penetration in the mythic passive so if we think about the top lane any champion you play against on 1v1 especially in the mid to late game is going to have some armor whether it's in the form of steel caps ga any of the tank mythics so this build allows you to 1v1 pretty much anyone in the top lane and because of the shield and the movement speed passive from eclipse it's really valuable on a champion like rengar because he appreciates all of these stats just as far as your room page goes this one on your screens now is the most effective this is in master and above around the world by taking revitalize this is going to make your healing just kind of insane and make you very hard to kill in the top lane any top lane out there who has played against a Rengar one trick pony top laner knows how difficult it is to actually beat this champion so this is kind of like a rare pick you guys can consider picking in 1218 if you're a top laner now the next champion kind of similar to Rengar with a bit of conquer as your keystone this is Mordekaiser so let's just say you want a bit of AP in the top lane Mord is a great champion to pick but here we can see that in challenger across the world the best build at the moment statistically okay it's only in 16 matches but to have an 81% win rate this goes to show how powerful frostfire gauntlet with demonic embrace can be on Mord now Mord because you actually deal decent damage without having a bunch of AP in your kit he can actually kind of afford to go frost now the great thing about Frostfire is the mythic passive of course, so the extra HP you're getting for each major item you have, this synergizes so well with Demonic Embrace because the more bonus HP you have from items, this gets translated into AP. So that's actually where you, so that is where you're getting the AP from. Not only does Frostfire make you tanky and the balmy cinder, the immolate passive, it gives you dueling potential. So even with just a Frostfire, you can still 1v1 the enemy top laner, but I would highly recommend guys if you're going to play more than the top lane, Flashing Ghost looks like a great option because Maud, his big weakness is getting kited. A bit like Darius in a way. So running Ghost allows you to stick to the enemy champion so you can deal that consistent damage with your Conqueror and all the tick damage you have. Now another top laner you guys can consider picking for 1218. If you actually do just want to play a pure tank, this has to be Maokai. So for Maokai in 1218, you are getting some adjustments. So your lane might actually be a little bit worse off because of these changes, because they are really buffing jungle Maokai with the Q buff to monster damage. But with Maokai in the top lane at the moment, in every single elo, even in high elo, where you might think this champion is going to be super counter picked all the time, he's still doing very, very well. That's because people are starting tier and building this into a Fimble Winter. Now make sure before that though, you're getting your boots and then Sunfire Aegis as your mythic. But once you actually get to Fimble Winter, Maokai is just awesome, right? And because you can proc Fimble Winter's passive on pretty much every single ability, it really makes you a big threat. Just as far as your rune page goes, you can go Mana Flow Band with Transcendence. This gives you even more mana because Maokai without mana is just a useless champion. So by taking these runes with an early tier, this allows you to poke the enemy champion during the laning phase and help sustain them, especially when you go grasp the Undying as your key stone because the HP you actually get back yourself and the HP the enemy chance will just be losing over time this allows you to out sustain them so that's kind of the game plan during the laning phase and because Maokai's ultimate now travels at a much higher rate a quicker pace this makes you even better than you once were in team fights so Maokai has to be on this list as well now heading to the mid lane here one champion at the moment who's performing very well in every single elo this is Kassadin right so because of the Q buffs the cooldown going down and the mana cost going down being really nice for cats but one build that people aren't really aware of going like it's not talked about on reddit there's no actual build on any guide website about this is actually going mura mana or mana mune as your mana item so pretty much every cast in player right is going to go seras embrace so what's the advantage when you go mura mana isn't that meant to be for attack damage champions who need a bit of mana for sure but the great thing about mura mana is that it actually gives you damage seras is giving you healing right that's why it's so good on champions like Anivia, because you can just leave your ultimate there and you heal off of it but when you're playing cast and healing well you don't really 
really need it that much. You just want raw damage, right? As you scale into a game. Muramana is going to outperform Seraph, and it's a much bigger item spike than Seraph will ever be. Because Seraph, as well as giving you lots of ability haste now, it's really fallen off from its former self before the item reworks at the end of Season 10. So for Cassidy, this is a super underrated build. I'd love for you guys to test this out. Just make sure you're pairing this obviously with your Mythic. This can be Crown, and probably should be Crown in the majority of games, or maybe Everfrost, and then obviously Zonyas. We need the Hourglass so we can survive long enough until our Rift War comes back up. So give this a shot, guys. I think this is a super fun build to go, and let me know in the comments what you actually think of it. Now, another AP mid laner, if you don't want to play Kasten, well, one champion who counters a lot of champions, this is Vladimir. So for Vlad in the mid lane, you can see that in high reloads in 4,000 matches, a sub 50% win rate. Oh my goodness, how is he underrated? How is this build so good? Look at the rune page for me. This is why. In over 70 games, a 67% win rate. Now, why is this? Conqueror. So lots of Vladimir players might take a Lech Kuhn or maybe Aerie in some matchups, but Conqueror, according to the statistics, is actually just outperforming every single other keystone for Vladimir. As far as your secondary tree goes as well, when you pair this with Nimbus Cloak and Transcendence, so Nimbus Cloak giving you movement speed when you use your Ghost, when you use your Ignite or Flash and Ignite, kind of depends on the enemy team composition, but because this is not being picked in enough matches, that's why it is on this crazy builds video, because people just need to know about it and know how OP it is. When you pair this with Night Harvester as well, and then Sork Shoes, Death Cap, because of the Night Harvester buffs not long ago, really, really nice spike for Vladimir, and because you scale so well into a game these days, a bit like Kassadin, you will become unstoppable so think about taking this room page guys in your matches again if any of you have tried this out let me know about it down below now heading down to the bot lane we've got a couple of ad carries to talk about here and the first of these is varus so i'm sure that lots of you have heard about caps playing varus in the mid lane right in the lec finals and yes this can work but i really want you guys if you are going to pick it please pick it in the bot lane mid lane it might work but because you're just on your own you've got no support next to you you've got no escape you can get ganked to oblivion and just solo lose the game so by playing varus in the bot lane and by going nash's tooth into rift maker the actual damage you deal because of the recent varus buffs so to his actual AP and is on it. This makes AP Varus legit. And one of the reasons this really works is because of all the AP ratios you have in your kit. So whether it's in the form of your W or even your ultimate, if you land your Chain of Corruption, it actually deals so much damage because there's a 100% AP ratio with this. So once you get Nash's, 100 AP, Rift Maker, and then Death Cap, think about all of that AP that's getting pumped into your ultimate. Also, your piercing arrows with your W active, you will be one-shotting champions. Just be aware, guys, of what the enemy team is building. So after you get Nash's and Rift Maker, you need to look. If they have lots of magic resist, void stuff. If they don't have any magic resist, you can go for something like a Death Cap. You might even want a Zonius if the enemy team has a lot of dive champions. So think about what the enemy team is building and how you stay alive and actually penetrate their magic resist. So AP Varus, another fun kind of champion and item combination to think about playing for 12A team. Now moving on, a similar champion in the bot lane, so an AD carry, who kind of goes a similar build. This is Kaiser, but the AP variant of Kaiser. So there are two build options here. Now both of these include getting a Mana Mune, getting a Nash's Tooth, and then, depending on the enemy team composition, you're either getting Luden's Tempest or Crown of the Shattered Queen. You can see that in Master and Above around the world, these two builds have very, very high win rates, 63% and then 78%. This goes to show how good this build is. Now, I understand that Void Seeker AP Kaiser got nerfed because that was a little bit obnoxious to play against, but AP Kaiser, because of the recent buffs, so in 1216, your AP ratio in your Q went up, your AP ratio, so the shield, in your ultimate went up as well. So once you start like getting a lot of ability power from your items, your abilities are scaling even more now. Just make sure you are getting a mana mythic because abilities are so important and when you start spamming them a lot, especially with the ability haste you will have, you will run out very quickly. And also keep in mind that every ability you can evolve with these items because of Mirror Mana's attack damage, Nash's Tooth's attack speed and also the ability power, same as Luden's Tempest. So it's actually a very underrated setup and might even be better than AD Kaiser at this moment in time and for 1218. Now we've got three more champions to talk about and all of these reside in the support role. But even if you don't play support, I think you guys will be super interested in this and it might even inspire you to actually test these out. Now the first of these is Set and we're talking about Dead Man's Plate Rush Set. Now Dead Man's Plate is so powerful because of the movement speed it gives you. So when you're running around the map, a bit more movement speed, right? Pair this with Swiftness Boots, you have a lot of pressure. Also the actual passive, so when you hit the enemy champion, it gives you a lot of kill threat and actual one-shot potential as well with your AD carry. I would just be careful Careful guys picking set into range supports. Yes, you can run something like Hex Flash and get onto them with Glacial because of the slow, obviously the Hex Flash, this helps a lot. But set really loves it when champions run into him. So champions like maybe
maybe Leona, like Nautilus, because it's impossible not to land your phase breaker into them, which remember has a 70% slow now, and this allows you and your AD carry to target a champion without overextending too much. So be a little bit careful about just like picking him, regardless of the enemy bot lane. Do think about it a little bit, but set as a support with a dead man's rush and obviously Swifty Boots. You might even want to get Mobility Boots early game, but Swifty Boots, Set needs the movement speed. If Set is getting slowed, he's going to be completely useless, especially against supports maybe like Ash or Lulu with her Q, Janna as well. And speaking of one of those supports, you probably wouldn't mind playing against a Set. This is Ash support. Now, I know Ash support has been out for a while, but I'm just going to clarify a couple of things here for you guys. So against ranged champions, you want to be running this rune page right here with Comet, Cheap Shot, Ultimate Hunter. But if you're against melee champions, Hail of Blades is really, really good because not only is it easy to actually hit the enemy champions because they're melee, but this applies your passive slow, right? And if you're running approach velocity in your secondary tree or even getting Imperial Mandate, this will just perma proc on those melee champions. So make sure you do choose the right rune setup based on who the enemy support is and maybe enemy bot lane. Of course, guys, you want to be maxing your volley first and then followed by your E. Notice here how no one in high elo when they play Ash support is getting their Q. Even though your Q is actually getting buffed in 1218, that's for AD carry Ash. So we don't need our Q at all. So Ash support, especially into a mobile teams. So if the enemy AD carry is something like a Jin or an Ophelios, a champion without a dash, or the enemy mid laner is like a Syndra or an Orianna, someone like this, Ash support is unreal and so, so fun to play. Now the last support guys of this countdown, this might throw a few of you off. And I know this has been mentioned in the past, but this is actually legit here. This is Nasus in the support role. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can this happen? Well, that's because Nasus is actually getting buffed next patch. And because of the sustained changes that came to the Rift a few patches ago, it means that post supports are better, right? And that's really what Nasus is. So this is why we want to be running Comet, then with Scorch. This is going to deal a lot of damage during the laning phase to the enemy champions. And just look at this skill order here for me. Now, I know it's only six matches, but it makes sense. We want three points in our E at level five. Then we're maxing our W, our Wither. And guess what's happening at 1218? Our W is getting buffed, so the actual movement speed slow. 75% of that movement speed you're slowing the enemy champions by is getting pumped into the attack speed slow. So think about this, if you're against an AD carry like maybe Callista, like maybe Zeri, someone who really loves attack speed, the Wither is going to absolutely cripple them. And when you rush an item like Frozen Heart, reducing their attack speed even more, no one can come near you as a NASA support. You do have to keep in mind though, guys, that you are very squishy. And two of your abilities really are just useless. So your Q, this is why we don't even get our Q. We want to be putting points in our W, our E, and our ultimate. So it's a bit like Ash support. Forget about your stacks. Forget about clubbing people over the head. You just want to be Wing the key targets, using your E to poke them down and using your ultimate obviously when they jump on your head. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section about Nasus in the support role or about any of the champions guys we've mentioned in the builds. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say and if you did enjoy this video please remember to leave a like down below and until our next season 12 upload this has been a peace.